I have something really fun planned this weekend. Kyle and I are packing up the teardrop and we're headed down to stay with a friend for the weekend and camp in their driveway. And the reason we're doing this is he is going to be teaching us how to TIG weld. I've always wanted to learn how to TIG weld. It's been on my list for a couple of years now of things to try. And I mentioned this to my friend Curtis. He talked to his dad who has a really nice shop with TIG welding equipment. And his dad was nice enough to offer to let us use the shop and Curtis himself offered to teach us. I've had some experience with MIG welding in the past, but I wouldn't consider myself very advanced with MIG welding either. I've worked on projects here and there, including when we had to weld together the base for our teardrop trailer, but I've never really done it consistently enough to get really good. I'm not really sure what to expect, but I'm excited to work with somebody who does have experience and can give feedback. We'll see how it goes. As I mentioned, we drove down after work and camped out in our friend's driveway with the plan to wake up the next morning and spend the whole day in the shop. Curtis was running this workshop and teaching myself, Kyle, and our friend Erica. Both Kyle and I had done MIG welding before, but this was Erica's first time ever welding. In the weeks before we came down, Curtis had modeled a cool little candle holder and sent it to Sen Cut Sen to have it cut into individual pieces. The plan was to do some practice on scrap pieces of steel, move on to creating a cube, before finishing off with the candle holder as our main project. All of those guys, the small squares, make up a cube. So that's like some practice we can do. Got it. Guys. We have bring one down if you want to have an example to look at. Or... So Curtis, how much experience do you have to welding? Like a decent amount? Yeah. Because pretty much all of the Jeep stuff, was that, was that TIG welding or mix of TIG and... No, a lot of MIG, right? Yeah, yeah. that would make sense. Yeah, where is the thing? For like stainless steel and steel. So you have the mm -hmm. negative, the electrons flow, you got the positive, the heat is in the part, so you'll make a puddle. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with MIG, that's the reverse, that's electro-positive, so that's why the electrode like melts. I'll give a quick summary of what Curtis is explaining. TIG stands for Tungsten Inert Gas, also known as Gas Tungsten Arc Welding, or GTAW. TIG welding uses a non-consumable tungsten or tungsten alloy electroid, which has a very high melting point. That doesn't mean it will never need replacing, but it just means the electrode is able to carry the current and sustain the heat. The electrode does not become part of the weld. In contrast with MIG and other types of welding, the electrode melts and becomes filler metal and therefore part of the weld itself. TIG works by melting the base metal or two pieces of metal that are being joined. The heat to melt the metal is generated by an electric arc between the electrode and the base metal. Heat is controlled with electric current and can be reduced or increased with, in our case, a foot pedal. We will be using a DCEN setup, which means the current is direct current, the electrode is negative, and the piece we are working on is positive. In order to complete the electric circuit, a work lead is clamped to the piece, or in our case, the metal welding table we're working off of. With TIG welding, you can weld with or without a filler rod to provide filler metal to the weld. And while you are welding, a shielding gauze protects the melted metal from reacting to oxygen or water vapor that is in the atmosphere. So what we'll start practicing is like creating an arc, seeing the puddle grow, because that's how you control your heat. And then like dab the puddle, pull it away, move the torch, dab the puddle. Bing like the torch in one hand and the And the rod in the other. Man, I feel like I'm in like a, a lecture. <laughs> this is Same so fun. With, with corners, right? If I'm welding and this looks like that from the side, if I'm welding these two together, if I'm over here in the middle and I work to a corner, all the heat from here has like sunk into the part. Uh -huh. By the time you get to the corner, the whole thing is hotter than it started. Uh -huh. So the corners are really easy to have them just blow pff, out, yeah. melt away on you. Mm. So when we do the actual little candle things, I'm gonna suggest we ta everyone tack some off. We'll be on electro negative. That's the polarity. There's AC. You would use 
Curtis gave us a rundown on how the equipment worked and which settings we would use on the welder for today's lesson. Once he finished giving an overview of the process and the equipment, we put on our protective gear and went outside to set up our auto darkening helmets to the correct setting. One of the other helmets was an old school non auto darkening helmet and Curtis took that one. Once they're set up correctly, these helmets will be clear to see through when you're not welding, but darken substantially once the arc starts to help protect your eyes from the intense bright light. We watched Curtis do a couple of welds before each of us jumped in to try our hand at it. Some people hold it like this, but I think having a lot of contact points is the best thing you can do. Okay. That? Certainly. Oh, that. Like straight down? Yeah, for now. Okay. Um. And that's a stiff paddle, so you can just put your heel on it. It took a couple of tries to start getting a hang of how much or how little heat to apply using the pedal, and it was also a balancing act keeping the electrode close enough to the metal, but at the same time not accidentally dipping it too low and making contact with the workpiece. It also took some time to feel out what the correct pacing would be. You don't need to swirl it for now, and just slowly drag it if it's easier. Once we all got a chance to practice starting an arc and moving the molten metal, we moved on to practicing with some filler rod. Dab from the side, move. Dab from the side, move. Dab from the side, move. Curtis stepped in to show us how to use the filler rod as a filler metal to create better welds. Handling the filler rod while also dealing with the torch and trying to control for heat definitely added a layer of complexity. And for myself, I can definitely tell it takes some practice to get in a good rhythm of making sure that the pacing is correct, the distance is the right from the base metal, and you're feeding in the filler rod at an appropriate pace. Most of our welds at this point were looking pretty rough, but hey, that's all part of the learning process. Didn't want it to flatten out. So is that like a piece Yeah, you add it material and you blow through the... Yeah, and it, it, the you are really just darting it kind of like yeah. quickly, all right. For, for camera reasons, try to bring this all the way up. There we go. <laughs> Versus just like the Darth Vader look or whatever, yeah. Sweet, Erica, do you want to try? Curtis was really good at giving us constant feedback on what we could improve or adjust as we were welding. Yeah. 
Looking at them later, I believe most of our welds were too cold, which speaks to the fact that all of us were being a bit too tentative in increasing the heat. Our welds were far from pretty, but towards the end I could tell we were all gaining more confidence, and with that there was definitely some improvement in the welds. We weren't quite ready to work on the candle holders yet, so we started with welding some of the cubes. This gave us some practice to do straight edges as well as dealing with corners. Did you see them yeah. bridge together? Yeah. Once you see that, boom, let off yeah. the, the pedal when you're there. We continued to switch off and take turns laying down welds so everyone got a good chance to do a decent amount of practice along the way. Once we were finally ready to tackle the candle holders, we tacked the different pieces in place before laying down the full welds. All that was left was to clean up the welds a bit and put in a candle. After finally trying TIG, I feel less intimidated by it. Like any skill, I can tell it'll take a decent amount of practice to get to a point where you're a true pro and laying down quality welds every single time. And I hope to spend more time in the future dialing in technique and getting a better understanding of how to set up the equipment myself. Overall, just having weekends like this makes me really thankful for the kinds of friends I have in my life. It's definitely a good reminder why it pays to surround yourself with cool people who are down to create and learn some new skills. I hope you enjoyed watching the process of our first attempt at TIG welding. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. I think we got it. Good. Find it, go down all the way. One, two, three. Oh, not all the way, sorry. I'm not rocking it hard enough. Okay, let's go one more time. Okay. One, two, three. Good enough. Yay! <laughs> Alright, it's lunchtime. <laughs>